Good evening, everybody, my friends, my family. I love you. 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 Praise God. We're counting up the days, counting down the days. Our uh, Mackenzie, she put up day 38 today. You know why? Because it's day 38 on the real calendar this year. We got straightened out. Praise God, man. You go along. You have a holy, pure heart before the Lord. And you say, Lord, just guide us in all truth. You promised that the Holy Spirit, you sent the Holy Spirit, and he, he would guide us in all truth. Now, please guide us in all truth. And he does. He will. And he corrects all the errors. And meanwhile, guys, everybody else is in error. Are they not praying that? Lord, guide us in all truth. Hey, Vondo showed up here, man. Looks like he put up the link for the uh, Bible codes unsealed, man, guys, get that, get that, get that, get that, get that, know it, read it, ingest it, meditate on it. God bless y'all. Download that Bible code book. I praise God for that Bible code book, don't you? Uh, also, Vondo saying, man, we're counting up the Omer, and that's what we were talking about. It's day 38 of 50 and day 38 of 153. There's 153 days total in the Feast of Pentecost. Hallelujah. And George does a write-up every day on Mackenzie's post, on her count-up post, and you need to read that every day. And it comes along with a little change, a little tweak here every day because of the, of the day count. And you'll want to be part of that. Uh, please take care of Sean in prayer, guys. Pray for him. Pray for him to have wisdom. Pray for him to hear the Lord's Word, to get the Word in time. Uh, God still hasn't given him the hour to publicize. God's going to speak to him. God's going to give him a word. Pray for him in that and take care of him financially, guys. Take care of him financially. Pretend like we're going to be here for all 153 days and take care of the guy. Uh, please like and share these nightly Bible studies, Vinyl says. Amen. Amen. Share it, guys. Share it, guys. Share it, guys. You want to share it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, so what are, what are some of the facts that God has given us concerning his rapture? What do we know? What we know is he's going to rapture us. And George, if you'd put this section up here, is George here? Put the section up about uh, on, on um, McKenzie's page that you do every day about the rapture year the mid-trib year, and the second coming year. You'll see that it's 83, 86, and 90. So what do we have the facts? The facts about the rapture are the rapture will happen in 83, 57, 83, which is this year. The Jewish calendar is 45 days too fast, so we know that 57, 83 stops in May of 2024. So there's there's a window. Okay, that's a factual window that we're we've discovered that we know that God has given to us. Because we know when mid-trib is, we know when the second coming is, you know, which is 2030, 2000 years after the ascension. Okay? We we know those things. We have those facts before us. And uh Hey Vano, could you put those those years up for us if if uh our brother's not here. It's right there in the middle of McKenzie's thing every day. There's a little section. It says uh, rapture year or something like that. Mid-trib. Hey, he's done it. Right there it is. Let's look at this. It shows rapture in year 5783, which is 2023, which we know ends in May of 2024. Okay? So we have that window. The Lord will rapture us before May of 2024. And then we have the other triangulation dates to help us with this date. God didn't just say, okay, you know, give us vague stuff. We know when mid-trib is, when Obama's going to walk into the temple and declare himself to be God. We know when that is. It's 5786, which is on the years 2627 on the, on the Gregorian calendar. And then the end of the trib will be 5790. That is the year we have, 5790, which is 2627, okay? So we, we know that. So what else do we know? We know it's going to be a 
but the six seal judgment is in April 24, isn't it? Uh, we're going to we're going to see the cross at that point. We're going to see the warning sign at that point. Um, so, yeah, we just keep on keep on going. Uh, the Lord may do it immediately. He may give them a month to repent and turn to him, knowing that it's going to crash. But that six seal earthquake uh, sign, the cross crisscrossing across America with the eclipse is 24. So, yes, the answer is Yes. Because that's just April of 24. And 24 is a long year. Okay. So that's what we got. So then we also, we have the year 5783. And that takes us to May of 24. Then we back up because we also have God telling us over and over and over and over that it's going to be a Feast of Pentecost rapture. And the Feast of Pentecost, we know, ends in... uh. October 28th is going to be Elul 29. Okay? October 21st is the end of the six-day wood offering. Okay? The Feast of Tabernacles is all about the Feast of Pentecost. Okay? All the harvest. Because all the harvest took place during Pentecost. You got your barley, wheat, uh, fruit, which is the grapes, and the trees and nuts, which is the olives. Okay. Bundle says October 21st is the last day of the 153. So now we've narrowed it back to October 21st, our rapture window. Hallelujah. And then we've got a bunch of things pointing to July. A bunch of July markers. July's hot. We know in the Bible code that Satan hates the 19th of July because that was last year's Shavuot. Remember that? July 29 last year. I'm sorry, July 9th. Was it 19th? July 19th last year was Pentecost. Boy, and Satan hates that day. Satan hates the day when souls were filled with the Holy Spirit of God and rendered him powerless. Okay, the cross did that, but now we got 3,000 souls immediately who are just a bunch of partiers coming into town to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. They've heard the gospel in their language, 17 different languages, and they have believed, and 3,000 souls were added to the church that very day. That's a lot of bright light around the darkness of Satan and his kingdom. The Bible codes, yes. Uh, Tracy says... So are those years that George posted from the Bible code somewhere or calculations using the book of Daniel? Uh, that is Bible codes. Bible codes give us that. Jo George is, a, is an avid studier of the codes, getting the timeline, getting the dates. And great question, that is from the Bible codes. Okay. So what, what we don't have on this side is the rapture date yet. Sean and I were laughing together a couple years ago. He found a code that said he's going to pass out just before the rapture. And we were laughing at the point. He said, man, I hope I don't get hurt. <laughs> you know? and I'm like, yeah, no kidding. We don't want you hurt, brother. You know, and uh, I, I kind of sidelined that. You know, I think about it every now and then. I, I think about it every now and then, but I don't think about it daily. And he reminded me about that, that the Lord is going to put him to sleep. And we'll probably speak to him some things. Come to him in a dream like he did Mary and Joseph and the rest of those people he came to a dream in. Joseph, again. Genesis Joseph and Matthew Joseph. Okay? And it looks like something like that's going to happen. Because he just shared with us that passage in Amos where it says God will not do anything unless he first reveals it to his prophet. The prophet of choice. And God always, always always debriefs his prophets. Comes down and talks to them. Uh, Jeremiah talked to God and God answered him and he answered back to God, right? Y'all remember that? You remember all the prophets talking to God and God talking to them and them responding in conversation? God's MO it hadn't changed a bit. Okay? Uh, Vondo says, great restrainer. Amen. That's us. That's us. The Holy Spirit-filled church, we're the great restrainer. We're restraining the devil, holding him back. Cheryl says he has to snatch us out of danger. 
this war is drip, drip, dragging on while they move the money. That's exactly right, etc. Plus, we need a lot more alien invasion stuff. Right on it, man. They got to disclose, 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 and get into the doctrinal minds of everybody. Keep checking on Sean, JB. It may be very soon. I do. I check on him every day. Ask him how he's doing. Let him know we're all praying for him. And praise God for that. Amen. So one day the, Lord, the Lord's going to lay him out and put him to sleep. Put a deep sleep on him. And come speak to him. And he might speak that word and give us a raptured date. Okay? And we don't have that exact hour right now. But God always gives the exact hour to his people. Okay? He did to Jeremiah. Did to Ezekiel. Daniel. He gave Daniel exact dates. Remember that? On a 490-year timeline, he gave him the exact dates. God does that. Because God wants his people to know. And you know who his people are too after we've been raptured is the Israelites. He wants them to know that there was a timeline. Like Daniel had way before it happened, way before Jesus Christ rode in on that donkey. Way before Jesus was one would be cut off, but not for himself, but for the you know the people. God wants them knowing there was a timeline and they missed it, called a rapture timeline, but they don't have to miss the salvation timeline. Amen. They can be saved if they'll listen to the preachers. Hear the preachers keep crying out. Amen. And so that's what they do. So we know, we know that the rapture is going to happen before May. And then we had it backed up with that whole one thunder, one entire thunder, pre-trib rapture thunder, talks about a spring, summer, Pentecost rapture. Boy, that narrows her down. Brought us back all the way to October 21-ish, and including the Feast of Tabernacles, which is a celebration for all the harvest. So we give ourselves that into November, but that's it. Okay? Then we got so many things pointing right here. Okay. Thank God for Mackenzie's count. Today's 38. We have two more days to get to the real 40th date. That is the ascension day of Jesus Christ that so many people are scoffing right now, guys. These are supposed to be the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ preaching the truth, encouraging their people. And they're saying, bah, he didn't ascend on day 40. And you and I in two days from now are going to be cheering and hollering and clapping and looking unto to heaven saying, Lord God, this is the day you ascended. Cheryl says, it does seem war and rapture together based on World War I and Two. Amen. I mean, the patterns, right? Guys, you got to know that Satan is working on his timeline. Their calendar is very important to them. Okay? We know that their calendar is, it ends, the, this is the Egyptian calendar, ends on July 18th. And it always begins their Happy New Year Day is July 19th. But we are in the middle of a humongous transition from the old world order into the new world order. Do they have a new date for their new year? Will that be Obama's birthday? Because he's such a narcissistic individual. You guys know that July, the month that's really hot that we're looking at, we, we see dates, guys, real heavy dates, timelines in the Genesis timeline and the Revelation timeline. Okay, Brother Rex from Texas was uh, reminded me again of that Genesis timeline and the Revelation timeline. And they go together and they look really good concerning the uh, calendar of the Egyptians when it ends and, you know, when they start their new beginning. Great stuff there. Uh, Revelation 17 and 18. Look at verses 3 in both of those. You'll see the Statue of Liberty, and you'll see um, them gloriously coming down. And then Genesis uh, 7, 17 and 18. You know, that's our timeline. Gen Genesis 7 and 8 is a, is a timeline. So God has his timeline, and the devil has his timeline. Amen? And so they're, they're really working their hot days, and they're going to have their 4th of July, guys. And you stay so far away from that, Cheryl says, July 4 is serious, rising. Blue Kachina is serious. Uh, red Kachina is Nibiru destruction. So many signs from God. And that's what we have triangulating us, taking us to the 19th and the 29th of July. 
These are hot, hot days. The whole month of July, guys. The whole month of July is God stepping forth. Okay? And, and when we say July, 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 what are we saying? Julius Caesar, who loved himself and developed a calendar around himself. And when you say August, oh, Caesar Augustus, who had a calendar and built it around him. And they declared themselves to be gods, the emperors of Rome. And why wouldn't Barack Obama come out and form his own calendar? Because the spirit of Antichrist is to change the dates, the times, the laws, everything. Heather says there are lots of people talking about the awakening and new world nonsense. So many people are getting sucked into this mentality. They need help. Uh, my brother put up a, a link on his page today about communism. And the goal of communism, the first step is socialism. And that's where they've gotten us, to where we just want to depend on them and everybody else. Bernie, Bernie, oh, Bernie, man, he wants to take care of all of us. Give us all a bunch of crap. And then you take away people's sense of reason. I was near a little girl, 18, 17, 18, talking to her, you know, just next to her, talking. And, hey, what's going on? What's going on? And was on her phone the whole time. Didn't know I was there. Didn't see me sit down next to her. Didn't hear me talking to her. And I'm talking to her as loud as I'm talking to you. Wow, hey, what's going on? How's things going? Everything good for you? Uh, didn't even know I was there. And I got up and left. Didn't know I was there. That's not an isolated case, folks. Enter the cell phone. Jesus said, look up, your redemption draws nigh, and Satan's got everybody looking down. Not only are they looking down, they're in a virtual world. Guys, they don't need the, the meta stuff. They don't need the headgear, okay? That is just something to, oh, hey, that's neato. They've already got it. They're already sucked into their phone. They're already sucked into the lie. They're already sucked into this awakening and new world order theology and uh, doctrine, military doctrine, Social doctrine, all the false teaching of the devil. They're already there. It's easy. They are looking down at their devices, says Vondo. They are devices. So we're looking for Jesus to come. Day 40 is in two days. That's a big day, the Ascension Day of the Lord. The real one, guys, the real one. You guys listening to my voice here on Facebook, on YouTube, and BitChute are the only ones who know that. And those who are going to Sean's page, you know, without even he hearing us, knowing about us. But those who go to Sean's page, they know what day it is. If they're tracking real well, when they realize the new calendar and all that jazz. And here we are, and there's just so few of us, man. It's, it's pathetic. All right, hey, let's look at some Bible codes, man. What do you say? Vondo, let's go to April 8th, 2022. April 8th, 2022. Who is the bread of life and who, who's the tree of life? Same individual. The Lord God, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, says Sean. John 6, 35. Cheryl says cell phone is 440 hertz frequency. Now, there's a good number for you. Uh, and, and they use the word frequency because it freaks a person out. It freaks out your whole body system. F-R-E-A-K, when they say it freaks, they're actually saying F-R-E-Q. It freaks you out. You get freaked out with their science. Of course, July 1st, financial system. All this is triangulating. She, she's got the notes, guys. That's what I wanted to see tonight, Cheryl. That's what, that's what helps us with our dates. We know it is going to be between two days from now, which is 629. 629 is a big number in Sean's codes and his numbers, okay? And that happens to be the 40th day. That's a big day for us, two days from now. And then 10 days from that, from 629, will be 79. And then 10 days from that is the 19th. And then 10 days from that, do you see a pattern here? is the 29th, and we're seeing a ton of stuff point to those dates, okay? That's why it's so hot for us right now, and it will be, we will have completed the 
50-day count to wheat, but people will still be picking wheat. I just saw a picture of the wheat fields in Kansas, and they're still still there. They've not been harvested full yet. So we're, we're in the wheat harvest going into the grape harvest, the new wine harvest. Amen. And Cheryl says 7-3 is the full buck moon, and you'll see that advertised on iPad Goat 2. That is their ministry. Now, we don't follow iPad Goat 2 to find out what God's up to. Well, we look at iPad Goat 2 and see what they think they're up to. All right? And God's using it in their heart. He knows their stupid plans. Remember, he looks at their plans. He sits in heaven and laughs. They think they come up with this extraordinary, awesome thing. And God says, <laughs> I'm going to put Sean to sleep and tell him what's going on. Almost like he's on, on the inside of their war room. That's what he does to all of us. That's what the Bible does for us. It lets us know what's going on in their war room. When you pay attention, these, these Bible codes are that. The very heart of God revealing to us what he knows, what he sees, what he understands. And we're like, wow, we're on the inside. Peter, James, and John. That's a glory thing. So you'll see that buck. You'll see that buck, that stag on iPad Goat 2. And then right behind the, st the stag's over here. And then the rabbit is right there, man. The rabbit has everything to do with space aliens and um, the rabbit in the moon. It was a rabbit who was the very first abductee in all of history, our history, our modern day history before the flood. Okay, or after, since the flood. And that was Bugs Bunny getting abducted by Marvin the Martian. Okay, and it's uh, all that rabbit. Everything is there. Everything's going on. And they're pointing to their Zodiac, their timelines. But that gives us a hint. The clues are everything. Now, when you see iPad Goat 2, you'll see that shark at the very beginning where the two presidents are. And you'll see, um, Cheryl says, we are in the year of the rabbit right now. Hello. And what is, it right, what is that rabbit right next to? The exit door. Hello? Hello? Final says, uh, can you say Babel? He was watching that nonsense and, and took care of business. Amen. God looks at everything and he takes care of it. Heather says, I still think Zechariah 917 is a huge clue for us 10 days after the wheat and the wine. Me too, sister. Me too. And you look at all, all uh, of those verses. You look at all those verses with, with uh, 719, forwards, backwards. 718, 719, 317, 316, all those verses going through. Cheryl's posted a ton of them, man. And it's telling it, telling something. It's a telltale. And so praise God for that. So we're in the year of the rabbit now by the exit door. Okay? Now, that same channel, Heliophant, they're the ones that put that video up. They had one video on their page for nearly 11 years. And they just posted another one. It's just like a three minute, 41 second dudes walking down with a video camera in Montreal down at the old port. And it is highly charged. There's a pyramid sitting there and the list goes on. Is the Apple New York, it drops and splits on top of an eclipse. Sure looks like it. Sure looks like it. Um, it's the big Apple going down and these guys are large and in charge of it. And whose foot is standing on top of the money? Barack Obama. He's large and in charge. He's never stopped being large and in charge. The reason they have Biden in there is he's a placeholder and he's getting all the, you know, all the bad stuff, all the bad press against him for all of Obama's doing. Okay? People have very short memories. So they blame Biden. While he was vice president, this happened. While he was vice vice president has no power over nothing. But he's the blame man. He's the fall guy. And that's what he's in there for, to get blamed and to to set uh, Barack Obama away from all the dirt, man. Who's the dirtiest, filthy bastard on the planet? Okay. Vondo, you know the Matrix movie has a white rabbit scene. Ha. Huh. All that. Alice in Wonderland going down the rabbit hole. They're, they invented all this stuff for us, guys. And one flew over the cuckoo's nest. All right, let's look at this Bible code. April 8th. Hmm. Two years before the crisscross that our sister was just talking about. Heather just mentioned, and that's going to happen on April 8th, 2024. 
And this code is two years to the date before that. A white rabbit, Satan symbol of adrenochrome. I've not heard that, but I don't doubt that. I see that everywhere. You guys remember in Donnie Darko, that evil rabbit that came down and talked to him and said, you got 28 days and whatever and however many seconds left. Remember all that? That was the rabbit telling you you ain't got too many days left. All right, so they've always used that. They've got to do that. They got to ritualize their mission. And we know right now while we're speaking and everybody's looking everywhere else that that Russian nuke submarine is on the move loaded with six more of the Poseidons. No telling how many they've unloaded. You know, they probably have two or three of these subs and they say they only have one of them, right? All you got to do is just park it down in the Antarctica or the Arctic Circle, never to be seen, never to surface, never to surface out in the open waters. You go out there, you your, your substation, your mission, your bombs, everything's up there in the Arctic Circle, the glaciers, and... You go underwater, never to be seen. You do your thing all stealthy. Drop your bombs where you need to go and come back. Amen. Amen. All right. So this April 8, 2022, who's the bread of life? It's Jesus, guys. We go with his plan. That's why we love these Bible codes. While everybody else is uh, writing pictures on the whiteboard and doing this and doing that. And, you know, just, oh, look here at this new revelation that I found. I've got Holy Spirit goosebumps. And they oppose the Bible code? We know immediately that's not Holy Spirit goosebumps, buddy. That's some fleshly lust up in that. Look at this new revelation that I have and nobody else has. And you oppose the Bible code? That's revelation from hell, my bruh. I pray you're my bruh. You preach like you're, you know, the, you preach the gospel. You just got everything else wrong after that. So many of that. It's called deception, guys. The pride, the pride of life takes over. And God hates the pride of life. He hates a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. And that's what's happening with all these guys, these false prophets. Our buddy Justin texted me today, said, man, you got to check this chick out. She is evil. She's given the false date. She's doing this. She's turning everybody off. And uh, she's one of thousands. Just one of thousands. Man, we've been following that crazy Renee for years who's got her rapture puzzle and all that jazz for years. Evil, evil, wicked women. And then all these others, they'll, they'll do their Bible prophecy and say, you got to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. They're Pentecostal oneness. They're going straight to hell. They're hell-bound whores telling you the Bible and how to be a good bride of Christ. Know who you're listening to. All right. John 6.35 And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. How many of y'all love that part? That you, were, you lived a life of hell, a life of trouble, a life of bitterness, a life of just misery. And then all of a sudden, you yielded to Jesus after you were saved. You were saved and miserable. But when you yielded to Jesus and said, Jesus, man, I, I just want you. I, I want to taste and see that you're good. I want to sit at your table and fellowship with you and be your disciple. That bread is a bread you don't go hungry on. It's a joyful, relieving, relieving your hunger and relieving, uh, give, giving you joy. There's joy sitting around the feast table with the Lord. He shall never thirst if he drinks my water. John 6, 51. I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the whole world, man. Taste and see that the Lord's good. Vano says, yes, Concerning the adrenal chrome, yes, it's because the chemical structure looks like a rabbit. That's right. That is exactly right. And they use that rabbit for that. That's right, bro. Thank you, sir. Great word. Genesis 3.22, very good passage here. And the Lord said, Behold, the man has become one of us to know good and evil, and now he has put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and that he may eat and live forever. We, we don't want him around the tree of life. Because if he takes the tree of life, he will remain forever in the state of, as a sinner. God said, I don't want that. Hallelujah. Don't you love God's goodness? The tree of life is meant for people who have eternal life, who have understood that Jesus has taken care of our sin issue. And then we eat from that life and have eternal life in that, being saved, 
being born again. In the midst of the street of it, this is Revelation 22, 2. In the midst of the street of it, heaven, and on either side of the river was there a tree of life which bare twelve different kinds of fruit and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were used for the healing of the nations. That's here in the millennium, the holy city come down. Here's the translation by Sean Mitchell, the official code bringer from the Lord, the ephod wearer. God speaks in his dialect saying, who is the bread of the living tree? Hurry, Jesus is eternal life. And we're saying that to you guys, hurry, hurry guys. Will you please, you must believe that trouble is coming. You must believe that destruction is coming. You must believe that God is livid with America and he's about to destroy it. You must believe Christian, do not celebrate do not celebrate the 4th of July. I always got all these guys celebrating, you know, I, I got my cross and I got my flag. Oh, how that makes God so sick, guys. Final says, Jesus has the best in mind for every one of us. Hallelujah. He loves you guys. He loves you. Be loved. Walk in his righteousness. Walk in his word. Walk in the joy that we are going to be raptured. The Feast of Pentecost, 2023. That is before 2024 on the Gregorian calendar. That should bring you joy. The official count ends October 21st. We should be raptured before then. And everything, so many things are pointing Bible verses, Bible timelines, things are triangulating toward July. And we know that it's going to be at least 10 days after, and maybe another 10 days after that. God's showing how important those tens are. But July is hot and heavy, the 19th and the 29th, and every day in between, between now and then. Be looking up, be ready, be walking. Uh, North Korea rallied to destroy the U.S. yesterday. There you go, guys. Ritual, ritual, and they're going to do it. God's going to use them to do it. Amen. Via the Russians, their buddy, all the Reds. They're, they're in one team. Who is the bread of the living tree? Hurry, Jesus is eternal life. And he said, God, Yeshua, he is this living tree. Uh, Jehovah, guys, is Yeshua. Sean Mitchell it's understood you search out the truth like this for them. God's talking right to Sean, and we get to read the conversation. Aren't you thankful that we get to hear God talk right to Sean, the prophet? There's not too many of us, guys. I don't know how many is live right now, but there's not too many of me hearing, hearing me say this for the first time and hearing these words because some folks came later and don't even remember these older codes from a year ago. And here it is, God's, God's saying in his dialect, uh, Sean Mitchell, it's understood you searched out the truth like this for them so the people after the rapture can know that we had a record of us saying this and God writing this and Sean producing this with English subtitles so everybody in the world could understand it. Sean Mitchell, it's understood you searched out the truth like this for them. For the house of Israel, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God. Because of this Bible code we're going over right now. All of Israel are going to know. Will you pray for all of Israel to know and see this Bible code? That Jesus is the tree of life. He is the bread of heaven. For the house of Israel, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God. It's true. And where is the manna? Jesus! Jesus is your manna. The picture of that manna falling from heaven for all you Israelis, all you Israelites coming out of Egypt, going into the promised land. That was picturing Jesus. And they're going to come to know Jesus and they're going to believe. Genesis 48, 15 and said, The God before whom my fathers Abraham, Isaac did walk, the God who hath been my shepherd all my life unto this day. And that's Jacob, that's Israel talking about God. They're going to finally come back to God and the Lord is going to woo their hearts and win them. He will let them know during the middle of all this destruction that he still loves them with such great compassion. Amen. 
praying for all Israel to see this code. Amen. Vano says, reminds me of the movies Red Dawn, the original Russian invasion. The remake was North Korea. Ta-da. Fresh manna, the word, Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. All right. This code is from, let's go the 11th. Yeshua, Jesus loves you, Israel. Jesus loves you, Israel. Hey, Princess Evelyn. God bless you. Good to have you with us. Thank you for preaching. I'm always encouraged. Waiting for the harpazo. So are we. Hallelujah. That's why we meet every night. Encourage one another. Keep looking up. And remembering the facts. Jack, that's what we were doing tonight. L look earlier for all of you that are coming in late. Go back to the beginning of this thing. And we were triangulating the facts that we have concerning the rapture. And we know it's going to happen during the Feast of Pentecost this year. With high heavy dates pointing to July. Amen? And look, we were looking for July. Turn to Jesus now for salvation. Jeremiah 31, 3. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness I have drawn thee. Jesus loves you, Israel. You hate him. You're blinded to him. So he's going to do his best to remove those blinders. And one-third of you will believe. Listen to this, Psalm 46, 1. This is what Barack Obama read in public, but you hear Jesus say it. A song of Alamoth. God is our refuge and strength of very present help in trouble. When you guys are in trouble, you need to listen to those guys who look like bums down there in Jerusalem. Guys, they're going to be in glorified bodies, and they're going to be perceived as bums, losers, homeless, sleeping there at the Mount of Olives and coming down to Jerusalem to preach every day. I'm going to encourage you to listen to those guys. Those are God's guys. Those are the two witnesses, the two lampstands of the world. Okay, you hear them preach and you understand that Jesus loves you and he is your refuge of very present help in the time of trouble. Romans 11, 25. This is a New Testament passage concerning this truth and why you're blind. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness for Israel is in part, it's just partial blindness that happened to Israel, unless the fullness, until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion a, a deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant unto them, and I will take away their sins. Those two guys down there, in Jerusalem, after the rapture, are going to be preaching, turn to Jesus, turn to Jesus, turn to Jesus. He loves you. He's your Savior. He's always been here. And you guys have been blind to it because your parents cursed you with a curse. Let his sin, let his curse be upon us and our children. Obama reading the Bible, never good. Heather says, thank God for the two lampstands and the 144,000. Amen. Amen. Preaching the truth. Pray for them, pray for them, pray for them, guys. You may have a, a loved one, a kin, a relation, somebody you know who happens to be one of these 144,000. Pray for them now, man. And pray for the Jews who will be listening. Now, a mediator, that, that's a go-between, is not a mediator just for one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? Heck no. The laws are important. God forbid that kind of thinking. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, well, go ahead and keep that law. But no law could give you life. You needed life to give you life. You need one to give up his life so you could have his life in you. He gave you his life. It's called eternal life, if you'll believe. But the scripture hath concluded that all are under sin, that the promise of faith of Jesus Christ might be given unto them that believe. Please believe. Please believe. Please believe now. Only believe. Listen to last night's message. Believe, believe, believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That taught us our need for a Savior, that we were such sinners that we could not keep the law. It said there's 613 of those. We couldn't keep them. And so that we might be justified by faith because of Jesus Christ. 
And that's what Jesus was teaching us. Jesus gave us the law to teach us that we need him by faith. We're no longer under that schoolmaster of the law when Jesus comes around. For ye are all children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ. Notice it doesn't say baptized into water here. Okay? There's a lot of folks been baptized into water. Every one of you Catholics been sprinkled and baptized, you call it. Going straight to hell. All you Church of Christ been baptized, you're going straight to hell because you're trusting in water. All you oneness Pentecostals, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, straight to hell because in this dispensation, you must be baptized into Jesus. That means believing in his finished work, his death, burial, and resurrection. That's the only way to be saved. Have you dived in yet? Have you dove are you in the deep end with Jesus, believing every bit it's all about him, faith, faith, faith in him, not keeping the law, not doing good works, not being baptized, not helping old ladies across the street, just Jesus. And you know what any good guy will do? Will help an old lady across the street. That won't get you to heaven. It just helps old ladies across the street who need help. Amen? For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Jesus Christ. We're called one new man. Every one of us are one. We're not separate entities. And look at me. I'm going to build my Johnny boy Watkins Ministries. Nope. We're all one in Jesus Christ. And we're building the Jesus Christ ministry of faith. The Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And if ye be Christ, that means you, you have believed in him. If you have been baptized into him and you've placed your faith in him, you are his. Then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Let's see what Sean says. Sean is the official writer that God gives him the word, the code, and he writes it. The translation, God's word in his dialect. Oh, Jesus loves you guys. Jesus loves you, Israel. You are like a veiled eye, though, however... Your eyes have been veiled. You, you can't see what God wants you to see, but you're about to see it. One third of you, two thirds of you, gonna never see it. You'll see hell. You'll be in eternal darkness, never be able to see anything again. We are pleading with you. We are begging with you to pray to have your eyes open. Just to pray this. God, if you're true, let me know who you are. Whoever your Messiah, if your Messiah has already come, let me know who he is. Please pray that out of a sincere heart. God will answer your prayer. Because God answers prayers according to his will. That is a prayer according to his will because he's not willing that any should perish and go to hell, but that all should come to repentance. Will you pray that? Even you atheists, even you Gentiles. God, if you're real, let me know. If Jesus is God, please let me know. I just want to know truth. However, you guys have a veiled eye. Jehovah is a fire. The word of the lamb. I am the fire in the bush. You all remember that story in Exodus? where you know that God introduced himself to Moses and gave his name when Moses said, so who shall I say sent me? And Jehovah said, I am. Well, guys, this is Jesus. This is Jesus. It's his fire. He's the word. That was him speaking from that bush. That was Jesus Christ of Nazareth speaking from that bush in that fire. Told Moses, take off your shoes, buddy. You're on holy ground because I am God. Jesus is God. Please, please pray that. Lord, open my eyes, unveil my eyes. And that first line, Jesus loves you, man. He loves you. He loves you. He wants you saved. He wants you unveiled. Oh, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Jesus, the Torah, is one with him. Jeremiah 30, 11, For I am with you, says the Lord, to save you, though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of you, because I will correct you in measure. I won't kill you all the way. I'll correct you until you've taken enough punishment, until your eyes have been opened and you've humbled yourself, and then I'll stop whipping you, God says. I had a guy, a famous guy, who says God doesn't whip his children. That's what the woodshed's all about. That's what the correction's all about. And the Bible tells us that God only spanks his children and nobody else. Take correction when it comes quickly. Be very sensitive to the Lord. Amen. And I will not leave you altogether unpunished. He says, I'm going to punish you. You guys have got some punishment coming for your wicked hearts, your, your blindsidedness, your evil wickedness. You're defying God. You're denying the very God who made you, who directed your 
children out of Egypt into the promised land. You have forgotten him. You have forsaken him. You don't care a thing about him. You deserve some punishment, but I'm not going to kill every one of you. I'll kill two thirds of you. And will the one third of you believe, will you be part of that bunch who believes? We encourage you to be saved on this side and go to heaven with us in the rapture. All right. Kloss, uh, demons rewriting it. Uh, it's because the demons are rewriting it. People who don't know the word won't know the difference. God corrects us as a good father because he loves us, guys. He only wants you doing right. He doesn't want you out in the street getting killed by a car. So he directs you away from the traffic. That's what chastisement is. He directs you to safety. He chastens you to safety. Hosea 1-2. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said unto Hosea, Go, take unto you a wife of whoredoms. Go find ye a, a whore. Go find ye a prostitute. And the children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. And this is all the Jews who were blind, who will not believe in Jesus Christ. Will not believe that Jesus is God, that God became a human to die for you, to give you who were dead his life, if you would believe this eternal life. Mm. Proverbs 23, 26, and 27. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways for a whore is a deep ditch, a crevasse. A strange woman is a narrow pit. You ain't getting out of this thing. You're stuck. Once you, once you find yourself with this whore, you are stuck. And the Bible says that everybody who is not following the Lord Jesus Christ, you're following whores. You're chasing prostitutes, idols, money, whatever it is. It's not God. And to follow God, his son, the, the everlasting one, Jesus Christ, to follow him is life. To follow him is to be a good bride, a good wife. If you're not following him, you're a whore. God considers you of the whoredoms. And we're asking you, we're begging you, as God has, will you please come unto me? Come unto me. Come to Jesus. Job 42, 5 and 6. Oh, I have heard of you, Lord, by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes have seen you. And that's what the Jews are going to do when they say Jesus, when they see him come back for the second coming. They will have heard about him from Sean and the other guy and the 144,000 witnesses. They'll be removed. And then they will, uh, after three and a half years, Sean and the other guy will be removed. And so will the 144,000. And the gospel that the one third of the Jews had come to know they'll be hidden in a hiding place with that gospel. And they'll be preaching among themselves, encouraging themselves in the Lord. And they'll be talking about the Lord. But at the end of those three and a half years in hiding, the time of Jacob's trouble, the Lord Jesus is going to come down, kill all the enemies and free them. And they will look on him whom they pierced. And just like Job, they say, oh, we heard so much about you. We heard the gospel. We heard the preaching. We heard it through our ears, but now our eyes see you. Oh, wherefore? And when that happens, guys, you'll abhor yourself. Have you come to the place in your spirituality where you abhor yourself when you think about yourself? Apart from God, it's God what makes you good. It is the Lord Jesus Christ that cleanses you. It is the Lord Jesus Christ that's going to give you the glorified body and remove all the shortcomings in you. Have you come to that place yet? If you'll become a disciple of the Lord, you'll come to that place and you will see him high and lifted up. In these Bible codes, you'll see him. Not just hear about him, you'll see him. He'll present himself to you. I encourage you to be that person. Let's look at another one. This is from April 12th, 2022. So who is the Messiah? His name is Jesus. Recognize thus. Amen. His name is Yeshua, recognized thus. Proverbs 30 and verse 4. Who hath ascended to heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? I, you, you were going somewhere. I knew that was Jehovah, the creator, but uh, we know his name, but you guys don't. Jews, you, you call him Hashem. You just refer to him as the name. And he's so sad, and he says, you don't even call me by my name anymore. His name's Jehovah in our English language. It's spelled yod heh vav -Hey, Jehovah. 
But he asked the question, Who, what's my name? Jehovah. And then what's my son's name, if you can tell? Yeshua, Jesus. Oh, but who's believed our report? Ask Isaiah 53. This is the forbidden chapter. Your, your rabbis are of the devil and they've kept you from this passage. Isaiah 53 is all about Jesus and it's clearly about Jesus. Will you please read Isaiah 53 in your Old Testament Bible, what we refer to as Old Testament Bible, your Tanakh, read it and find Jesus there. See him there. Isaiah 53, the suffering servant. God came to heaven to die in your place. Please read it. We're going to read an excerpt. Isaiah says, so, but who's believed our report? We've preached this truth. We've preached Jesus. Who's believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He, Jesus, is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces far from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. All of us, every single one of us, just like sheep, We've gone astray. We've turned everyone unto his own way. And the Lord hath laid on Jesus the iniquity of every one of us. Will you please believe that your sin issue has been taken care of? The Father has laid every sin of the entire world, all sin, for all time, upon him. And when he died, he took care of the sin issue. Amen. And Jesus himself reads from Isaiah. Amen. He sure does. That's the very first thing he read publicly as a, as a priest when he became in his priestly role. Now, he's of the lion of the tribe of Judah. He wasn't of the Levite priestly role. He was of the Melchizedek priestly role. Amen? The heavenly priest. And at age 30, he picked up that Isaiah scroll and read from what we refer to as Isaiah 61. And he is the Messiah. And he read a Messiah passage that day. And that day, the local Jews didn't like that either, and they wanted to kill him that very day. You better believe, guys. Ask God to remove your blindness. Ask God to say, Lord, what is the truth? Will you be willing to pray that prayer? Just say, whatever is truth, God, that's what I want. I want your truth, and I want it immediately. I don't want it to wait around too long. Here's the translation. Official code by Sean Mitchell. Here's God's word in his dialect. Who is my Messiah? His name is Yeshua. Recognize thus. See the salvation of Jehovah. The Lamb was completion to me. Jesus completed the law. He fulfilled the law. And dying on the cross, one of his last words he ever said was, It is finished. Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Amen. And he gave up the ghost and died. It is finished. The law was completed. Everybody could go to heaven now if they would only believe. You don't have to keep the law. You don't have to have a temple. You don't have to have red heifer sacrifices and ashes. You need Jesus. He is the completer. And God tells us that right here. The lamb was completion to me. Oh, they mocked the poor one, Jesus. Remember, he was rich. He, he left heaven and came to this earth and became a poor man. So that and, and the word of faith in the NAR totally missed this doctrine. But Jesus was poor. He was poor. They say, oh no, man, he had industry. He, he had his own treasurer. Judas, the Bible says he was poor. He was rich and he left heaven and came to this earth and became poor so that we through his poverty could become rich. He traded places with us. We were poor and needy. And now we could have heaven. He left heaven, became poor, so that could take place. He traded places with us. Amen. Let's look at another one. His name is Yeshua, guys. God is Yeshua. Be saved today. Believe, believe, believe. Pray. Just, just pray. God, if you're real up there, I, I, I want truth. I really just want truth. And we pray that God will direct everybody who wants truth to our Bible study. Because by his grace, you're going to get truth here. That's what we want to deliver. That's what we want to preach. The truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, guys, this code here is incredibly amazing. I had a whole group of people leave my church because they didn't like Bible codes. And right after they left, 
Sean uploads this monster, magnanimous, humongous code. I'll see his context on this, how many, how many letters were in it. Let's just read it from the top. Here's what Sean commented on this code from April 15th. Remember what April 15th is? The day Jesus died on the cross, on our Gregorian calendar. This was a year ago on the uh, 2022. This, this is the very day Jesus died. We did not know that then. Okay? And look at this amazing code, this amazing word, at an incredible skip comes out. Amen. This significant encoded message is truly, this is Sean talking to us. Okay? He's learned a whole lot more than we know. Okay? It says, this significant encoded message is truly an amazing gift that God has left for us in the Aramaic Peshitta. That's the New Testament, okay, written in Aramaic. The code appears as a huge cross when you look at this code. And Vondo has just put the link up here, so click on that link and look at this big old cross that we're talking about. And God did this. God encoded this code with a cross on it so the Jews could be saved, man. And so the Gentiles would believe and be saved too. Oh, that Bible's garbage. Okay, that's why we introduce you to the Bible code because God has placed the Bible within the Bible. Only there's a whole lot more there in the code than there is in the 66 books. Because the 66 books, we read them linear. We read from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible code keeps going. The Bible code, you can go all the way around one chapter and, and have, find a code. You can go around one book and find a code. You can go around a section of books. The Law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and find codes. You can go through the Old Testament and find codes. You can go through the book of Isaiah and find codes. Over The Bible code is much larger than the plain text. There's a whole lot more there with greater detail. Because God wants you to know the details here at the end so you're not wrong, so you're not taken away by false doctrine and liars. Okay? This has 88 letters. The people in my Bible study said, oh, those Bible codes, I just, isn't the plain text enough? Isn't, I had a lady tell me that, one of my most faithful individuals said, isn't the plain text enough? Not to God. This is his code. He, he kept it hidden for us till 1976. And then he, a year later, he had the guy born who would be giving us the codes, the official codes. The code was present before the guy who was the official ephod wearer was born. And then he matured into it. And eight years ago, we began, seven plus years ago, we began getting our first codes from God officially by his ephod wearer, Sean Mitchell, Moses. He's a descendant of Moses, both on his father and mother's side. These people left. Isn't that enough? And then God gives us an 88 character code proving how powerful he is, how awesome he is, man. Let me look at this real quick. Boom. This is, let's see here, New Testament, Prashida, Corinthians, Acts, Matthew, okay? So we got a whole lot going here. I want you to understand this. So that God left us this amazing code in the Aramaic text, the Prashida, uh, Prashida. The code appears as a huge cross in the term, the Messiah of Jehovah at the center and the terms he fulfilled the Torah of the law standing right beside it. Also right at the intersecting point of the cross reads and the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled in them. This is absolutely incredible. Only God could have arranged these 88 letters in such a precise order. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Fondo, what is the ELS? He continues, Sean continues, the message is in riddle form, even explaining itself to be a riddle. I leave it to the reader to decipher its meaning. Ezekiel 17, 26, 17, 2, okay. Uh, Son of man, put forth a riddle and speak a parable unto the house of Israel. Jesus drank the bitter cup of sorrow in the garden of Gethsemane, which contained the wrath of God, which we deserve. Wow. Matthew 26, 36 to 39. Then cometh Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. 
And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, that's James and John, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, Oh, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Please wait right here and watch and pray with me. And he went a little further, and he fell on his face, and he prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, please let this cup, what cup? The cup of God's wrath. Please let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not what I want, but what you want, Lord, your will. Amen. Uh, Vano says the ELS is 70,000. 328 between each of these 88 letters, okay? You had better come to be a believer, a firm believer in the Bible code as you are the Bible. You better believe that all 66 books are God-breathed from the Lord. Every word, every yod, every tittle is from Him, of Him, because of Him. And it is Him. The Word of God is Him. Jesus is the Word made flesh. You better believe that. And you better believe that God in His goodness opened up his coded text, the Bible within the Bible for us in 1976, had the scribe born in 1977 and just a little over seven years ago began revealing to us God's word in his dialect. And this particular code is 88 letters in the Aramaic New Testament at a skip of 70,328. 70,328. 70,328 exactly for 88 characters. My people quit the Bible study just before this code come out and said, isn't the plain text enough? Don't be that fool, man. You better understand God's goodness here, his gift to you, giving you the coded text, his word and his dialect, his fire, his thunders, his heart, his poetry, his mind. And let this mind of Christ dwell in you richly. You ready? So he went there and he prayed and he was so sorrowful, man. He said, I don't want my will, Lord. I want yours. Now, here is the code. 88 characters in a skip of 70,328 each. He says this, for the Son of God to be contended against from one city. There was only one city on planet Earth that God that belonged to him. He created earth for everybody else. He created Israel for Israel, for the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he said, I have one city on earth, that's Jerusalem, and only Israel will be the custodians of my city. So God, knowing that man needed a savior, he became flesh and he came to that city. He was born up north of that city about 90, 110 miles up in Galilee. That's where he stayed, Nazareth, okay? And then when he reached age 30, he went into that temple in Nazareth, and he proclaimed himself to be the Messiah, and they wanted to kill him from day one. He made his trek down to Jerusalem, and in the Bible, it's up to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is up. In whatever direction you go to, you, you go up to Jerusalem. But you and I in our map making, they went down to Jerusalem, north to south. And he walked that street for three and a half years in his city, his town, because Jesus is Jehovah. And he roamed the streets there, man, and they hated him in his own town. That's what this says. For the Son of God to be contended against from one city caused the Messiah of Jehovah to feel his night. He was hated. He was despised. He was rejected. He was the light, and everybody was trying to put his lights out, and they did on the cross. And he felt his night there. He felt his night in Gethsemane. That night he went to pray after the, you know, the Passover supper, the Seder supper. They went out to the garden and they sang a hymn. And they went to the Mount of Olives and they prayed and he was begging his guys to pray. And that heavy weight come upon him as the sin of all mankind began to engross him and swell him. And he began to discover night, the night of sin, the night of death. He had never known before because he's the light of life. He says the Messiah of Jehovah to feel his night. Oh, he was so poor. He left heaven and came here to become poor. He was lofty. He was still God the whole time. And he humbled himself to men, to leadership, to his parents. He was a humble man. He followed his, uh, the preaching of the word. He humbled himself under the law and kept every law. Though he was poor man, he was still lofty. Heaven adored him. Heaven respected him. The devils feared him. 
Not as much as they should have, because they're about to kill him. Messiah Jehovah, to fill his night, he was poor, yet he was lofty. He proposed a riddle, because God's a riddler. That's why we have these Bible codes. That's why he spoke in parables, because God loves riddles. You know why he loves riddles? Because when he walks away from telling you the riddle, he would love for you to follow him and say, what was that about? I'd like to know what you meant. Research, study, sitting at the feet of Jesus, Mary, little Mary, that's what she did. That's what God loves. That's what he requires. George says, this is the first Bible code I started to write explanation comment on. Since then, God has enabled me to write more. Amen, guys. And, and read his commentary in here. Read, read his commentary in every one of them, okay? And be blessed. Uh, the Lord has commissioned him to write these comments in every one of these books so the Jews can read it, okay? They won't get to this preaching message. They'll see these Bible codes, though, and they'll see George's comments. And his comments are powerful. Read them. He felt his night. He was poor. He was lofty. He proposed a riddle. A firebrand of blood was spoken of by me. Now, when you read Zechariah, a a, you are a firebrand plucked out of the fire. That's Jerusalem, right? Jerusalem was destroyed. They had been destroyed a couple times by the time Jesus shows up. All right? And they were on fire. They were burned to the ground. It had been vacancy pretty much for those 70 years that the children of Israel were in Babylon. And Jesus blew out that stick, that, that torch, that night torch. You were a brand plucked out of fire. You were to, scheduled to be burned to the ground, and I stopped it, Jesus says. He's speaking a riddle. He says, a fire brand of blood, and they were a bloody city. They killed all the prophets, and they finally killed the very Son of God. Remember the parable of the vineyard? I sent, sent my servant. They killed him. I sent another servant. They killed him. He said, I'll send my son. Surely they won't kill him, and they did. This firebrand of blood is Jerusalem. That's what he's talking about. Was spoken of by me. I shall roam the interior. And for three and a half years, Jesus roamed the interior of this Jerusalem. It was his own city. It was the city of God, the city of Zion. It's the name where he says, it's the city where I'm going to put my name there, Moses. And, and you guys come to visit me in my town, you know, three times a year, all the males. Amen. For the three harvest festivals. Pentecost being one of those. And it's Jesus city, and he's in the interior, roaming the interior of his own city, and he's despised and hated of men in his own town. People don't even like God. The church doesn't like God today, guys. They hate God. They say, oh, they love God. Oh, let's worship God. It's a different God. It's not this one who roamed Jerusalem. It's a different God. It's not the God of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and it's not the Jesus of Nazareth they worship. It's a different Jesus. Maybe the Jesus of the Nazarene church. Everybody who believes the Nazarene doctrine, you're going straight to hell, man. Because it's not of works. Everybody who's under the Azusa street, curse, hex, Pentecostals, Charismatics, you're all going to hell, man, if you believe their doctrine. You better come to believe this one Jesus Christ who roamed his own town and was hated. And he's roaming your town and he's hated still. Hopefully you love him. And he said, you love me when you regard my word high. You'll shut the TV off and you'll want to hear from me. A firebrand was spoken of by me. I shall roam the interior of this place. What place? The firebrand of blood. But the index, God knew what was in everybody's heart. He had indexed everybody's heart and everybody he passed, he knew. He felt when that lady touched the hem of his garment that virtue had left his body. And he knew before he, he, did, he didn't ask a question because he didn't know. He asked the question because he wanted the woman to step forward and say, it was me. In faith, 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 faith all the way. Amen. And he indexed everybody's heart as he walked past. The Bible tells us in John chapter 3, he didn't need that any man tell him. End of John chapter 2. And he needed not that any man tell him of their heart because Jesus knew their heart. He knew the heart of man, and there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. He knew Nicodemus' heart before Nicodemus showed up because Jesus walked around that town indexing the hearts. Remember, he's a documenter. He, he, he documents everything. He's been documenting your heart since the day you were born. He's been documenting it ever since the day you became a Christian and a believer. 
boy, I hope there's a good documentary there. Because he indexes. And there he went, he walking, roamed the interior, indexing every man's heart, and he knew the law like he knew men's hearts. And it was such a stress for him because nobody around him was keeping the law. And he knew they couldn't. That was why he came, was to keep the law for them and then to die in their places. He was the lofty one. He became the poor one. So all of us poor ones in need of a Savior could become the lofty ones. Be seated in the heavenlies with Jesus Christ, being the body of Christ Jesus, the head. A firebrand of blood was spoken by me. I shall roam the interior, but the index, the law, and the bitterness of the stone. Jesus is the stone. He was so, all that stuff made him so bitter. And while he was praying in that garden, drinking that cup of God's wrath, the sin coming upon him, all the, everything that he knew was indexed in people's hearts was now being placed on him. Oh, the law was being placed on him because he had to die with the law to do away with the law. Death, burial, and resurrection. Aren't you thankful for his death, burial, and resurrection? You must believe and place your faith in his death, burial, and resurrection for your salvation. But all this was incredible bitterness to him. Sorrowful, terrible, the worst ever, the blackest of night. You shall drive out from the Isle of Jehovah. The Isle of Jehovah is his island, Jerusalem. It's the only thing that belongs to him. Everything else is the Sea of Gentiles and outside of Israel. You all can have it. I get my island and he was driven out of his own island in the mist of it. Remember that mist that's blinding Israel? All the darkness, the sin. And he was driven out with that mist upon him. His day was becoming night. A companion in the mist and an isle of mist with it. He was taken from his island, his own place, and they took him outside. They kicked him outside of his own place and put him on a little island that he came for, the cross. Isolated, out there, all by himself on an island, outside of his own town. He wasn't even accepted and loved and believed in his own town. And they kicked him out with all this darkness and heaviness on him that he had suffered beginning in the garden. And then he went through all those trials. And then he was kicked outside the town and sacrificed on that cross. And the mist of God came. The darkness of man, sinfulness, came upon him. And then the darkness of God separated him from the Father. And he was in that dark, the eclipse of Nibiru, for three hours, suffering the wrath of God upon him. And he was darkened, and nobody could see him between that mist, that veil of the wrath. And God saved man from having to see what Jesus went through. And he had the mist, the darkness of man upon him. And then on that cross where he was exiled to an island, just like John. And what happened to John? John finally came back to that island of, where Jesus was all by himself with the women. And he showed up in his darkest moment. And what did Jesus do? Showed up on the Isle of Patmos in John's darkest moment. And gave him some of the greatest revelation and light 22 that you have ever seen. I hope you've seen it. I hope you've read Revelation. I hope you're very familiar with it. John visited Jesus on his island and Jesus visited John on his. I love this story. This is God telling it. The Messiah of Jehovah fulfilled the Torah. He completed it. He kept every one of it and so nobody else had to. And he died for you. So you could be considered as though you kept the law. So you could be made righteous from the law. So you could wear his robe of righteousness, be infused with his righteousness, and that's what God would see would be his righteousness on you and not your black mist, not your sin, not your rebellion, not your bloody hands, your bloody mind, your bloody thoughts, not this firebrand that was supposed to have been burned to the ground, but he delivered you. He blew the fire out and he saved you because he's our savior and he took the flame upon himself. The Messiah of Jehovah fulfilled the Torah. Jesus, Yeshua of Nazareth, the Nazarene, was ambushed. A little baby lamb. You don't ambush a baby lamb. A baby lamb will come up to you, or walk up to you. Jesus gave himself. And as he gave himself, he says, why have you come to me at night? I was with you all day today. You could have got me today. 
I was in the daylight. I've always been in the daylight. I've never been on the run. And they ambushed him at night. Jesus the Nazarene was ambushed. He was taken down by the Pharisees, the sons of the devil, the arm of Satan. That's who rules Jerusalem right now, the Rothschilds and the rest of them. They're the same family, demon-infested family, sons of the devil. Jesus was ambushed. He was taken down by the Pharisee. The lamb will be crucified. Matthew 13, 13 and 14. Therefore speak to them in parables because they won't see it clearly. They have eyes, but they won't see. They have ears, but they're not going to be able to hear a thing you're saying. Neither do they understand. And the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled in them, which says, Hearing you will hear, but you will not understand. And seeing you will see, but you will not know. And everybody sitting there that day watching Jesus die had no idea what they were seeing. And had no idea what they were hearing when he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. He's, he's talking to Elias. He was talking to God. They couldn't even understand and figure out what he was saying. Matthew 27, 1, and many Christians today can't. People sit in church that have, they don't even hear the preacher, and the preacher ain't even preaching the, the word. So everybody's jumbled and mangled and messed up. Having ears, they ain't hearing a thing. Having eyes, they're not seeing it clearly. I pray that you pray that you will. Please show me. And when the morning, and when it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders and the people took counsel against Jesus, how they would put him to death. Bam. We'll stop there on that Bible code. That was quite a doozy. Isn't the plain text enough? No! Jesus has some amazing stuff in this code, man. And you better come to recognize it, and you better shut your TV off. You see, these people who wanted the, the plain text, they love their TV, and they love their hobbies. And they love just doing their doings outside of God in heaven. 88 character skips on 70,000 plus. That's of God, his finger, his touch, and he presents a riddle in here and tells the whole story of his crucifixion in it. You better wake up, man. You better wake up to the things of God. We encourage you to. All you sinners, you better be saved. You better believe that this one Jesus Christ has died for you to lift your burden, to lift your mist, to lift your darkness, to lift your being poor, your poverty. So you could become rich in him if you'll believe. And he'll give you light for that darkness. He'll exchange all that bad stuff. He took it upon him already. Will you take upon you his light and his goodness and his bounty and his blessings? The only way to do that is by diving in. Jump into Jesus and believe in his death, burial, and resurrection on your behalf. Amen. Uh, since then, God has enabled right more for God's glory. Oh, man, I totally missed that. All right. Uh, Heather says, Hallelujah, Jesus shows up in our darkest moments. He is nearer than our next breath. Wow. George says, These people who left the plow after holding it will be ashamed of themselves. Yes, George, I, I agree with that. So ashamed. Preach it, says Cheryl. Amen, says Lila. Amen, brother. Man, George, I look, guys, read his commentaries, will you? You will learn. Get your notepad out or just highlight, you know. Copy and paste. Get, get you get you a, a electronic notebook here and take down his notes. Very good stuff, brother. I love you all. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll protect Sean, that you'll give him rest, that you'll deliver him the message to his heart from your heart that he needs. We thank you for revealing everything to your prophet before you act. That is such a, a rest, a, a joy to us, a peace. We love that. And... Uh, we're excited, waiting on, on your day to do this, to speak to him more clearly and help us to be patient in the meantime, to look unto you, to look at these hot dates through the month of July and know that you, uh, you hate men praising themselves all the way from Julius to Augusta and the rest of them. And you're going to destroy their calendar and you're going to make yours known and thank you for bringing Sean forward to let your calendar be made known and getting us all on your right dates. That's a privilege. That's a joy. And we're so thankful to you for that. And I pray for everybody here. Lord, anybody that has darkness upon them, demons, just trying to overtake their thoughts and minds, I pray that you'll give them the grace to take every thought into ca captivity unto the obedience of Jesus Christ 
and all that darkness and mist and death and blood in their minds will be removed and replaced with your light, your blood, your goodness, and your, your everyday blessings. And give them rest of soul, rest of mind, rest of thinking. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Love you, man. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, Prophet Sean. Amen for your faithfulness. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, says George. I love you guys. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow night by God's grace.